my name is May Hessian. I'm 18 years old and I go to school in Mount St. Michael's in Clamaris and I play for Valley Hall's Ladies Club. And you play fullback for your school and your full forwards is your sister. Tell me about her. She scores a lot of goals. Yeah, Bree plays for Clamaris um, Ladies Club. Yeah, she's playing full forward for us and yeah, she's only sees goals and she's doing great for us at the moment. What was it like to watch her in the semi final scoring three four? Yeah, it was great being up in the full back line. Um, yeah, you get a great boost out of it when you see your full board and your sister scoring the goals. It was great. Happy out. So, apart from you two sisters, who else have you got? Tell me more about your players. Name names. Um, we have like had a good few groups of sisters. There's the Horkins and the Cumses, groups of twins as well. Um, we have Alana Fitzpatrick, who is, you know, unreal at the moment. Like, she's up and down the field, doing great for us. And yeah, she's just one of the main players in my eyes at the moment. Yeah. And who's your management? Who have you got there? Tell me uh, about them. Emma Galligan, Laura Brogan and Matthew Walsh. Yeah, Emma Galligan's brilliant. She is very organised with us and yeah, she just is brilliant. She's We've been training since, you know, the get-go since last Christmas and yeah, she's just brilliant. Now, how much are you looking forward to this? What's the excitement like in the school and for you as captain? Yeah, it's a great buzz. Like in Mount St. Michael's, we're a great close net, we're a great community and yeah, there's a great buzz around the school and we're so excited to play the All-Ireland Final. And just finally, what are your, or who are your role models in ladies Gaelic football? Who are your favourite players? Um, my favourite player is probably Rachel Kearns, um, Vicky Wall, Colin Boyle and Lee Keegan. Strong Mayo connection there, no surprise there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love, yeah, they're great footballers and they're, I envy their speed and their, their strength. I am Unin Connolly, I'm 18 years old, I'm playing the All-Ireland Base and our final with Kalosh Oriel uh, and my club's Costown. And what's it like being here in the dressing rooms and outside getting your picture taken here in Croke Park? Oh, it's surreal, it's brilliant, like um, pitch such a nice day to be out too and you're not touching the grass but you really want to get on, even the changing rooms are just unreal too. Have you been here much before, what are your best memories of Croke Park, what does it evoke in your mind? Oh, uh, well, a couple of us Monaghan girls went to the All-Ireland Ladies final this year and saw Meath in Dublin play. It was just unreal. The atmosphere was brilliant too. Who would your favourite players be in the game then? You're talking about the Meaths and Dublins there. And, you know, who's, who do you look up to? Who's your role models? Well, this year anyways, Vicky Wall, she's just outstanding. Everyone in the field, you'd see her in backs and she'd be up the field in like 10 seconds. Unreal. Or Emma Duggan, she can shoot from anywhere. Tell me about your team now. You're the captain of this team. Who, who have you got? Oh, I don't know if I can tell you that. I'm only joking. Um, uh, we have a good panel, 1-15, to 15, and even the subs are brilliant too. You could take, trust any of them to come on and take the field. We have a few good players from Play County, everything. So, uh, Eva Sherry or Holly McQuaid, Fords, um, Bridge McNally, and a couple of good backs too, Scarlett Heron. Those are all girls as well, or a lot of them who won the Ulster minor title last year up in Corrigan Park. You beat Antrim in the final, and what a team. I mean, there's so much talent coming through. So much talent, even for the senior ladies coming through too. Even under-16s, everyone. We have a few county under-16s, the goalie and Eva Sherry, and then the minor team too. There's about five or six of us on it too. And tell me about your management. Who have you got? Who's in charge and what are they like? Fiona Patton's in charge of us, she's a woman herself, well Carrick originally, better say that or she'll <laughs> shoot me when I get home. Uh, and we have Annette uh, Duffy with us too, very, very know what they're at, coaches will tell you if you're doing it wrong, they'll po point it out and very encouraging too to have on the sideline. Do you think where Monaghan might be in five years time with the talent that's coming through and the victories at underage at county level and with the school work as well? Yeah, I hope so anyway because we've two loads of schools that are very strong our ladies as well um, and then the minors and all coming through too so hopefully so you're 18 you've been to crow park to watch the ladies final last year you're excited about that you're captaining your team now in an all Ireland final you've won ulster championships as well where are you in 2022 as a young girl and what do you think of ladies gaelic football how much of a part of your life is it? and what do you think about where it's going well i'm playing with the senior monaghan ladies this year and I really want, really, really enjoying it so far. Tough challenge trying to try and make the team too. So hopefully I'll get better and make it. And how do you feel about being captain in this particular final then? Um, well, it's not really a big job because there's 
leaders on eve, a, every line of the pitch on the Colossal team. But it's a big achievement in my eyes. Um, because if I put myself up to any of the girls like Brage McNally or Alana Corrigan or Anya Duffy, it's a lot of leaders. <laughs> Ladies football's really coming up, isn't it? I mean, it's catching up with the men fast and they're going to fill this place. Oh yeah, sure. The All-Ireland final, I think there was loads of, the big crowd was mad, the atmosphere was buzzing. It was just like a men's game, so it's coming up really, really well. You heard from the captains and you heard the number 14 there in the shot mentioned. That is Brie Hessian. Watch out for her today. She scored, wait for it, three goals and four points in the semi-final. She is a sister of the captain of the team in blue. That is Mount St. Michael from Claire Morris in Mayo. They are here in the sunshine in Glennon Brothers Pierce Park in Longford for the Lidl All-Ireland Post Primary Schools B Championship final. And they are up against Kalastia Oriel from Monachan, and we will be going to them in a minute. But we're going to start by giving you the teams, and let's start with Mount St. Michael. In goals, they have Kira Brennan, and up the middle, as I say, they have the Hessian sisters at 3 and 14. They have the Horkin sisters as well. Dervla is at number 9, and her sister Roisin is at 23 in the subs. And you have Amy Cummings at 13, and her twin sister Ashling is at number 19. And Nina Wallace is at number 10, and I met her mum there all of a few minutes ago. She's here inside the perimeter of the ground taking photographs, but she's very, very nervous for her wee girl playing in this big All-Ireland final today. Watch out for the full forward line. Amy Cummins got a goal in the semi-final, Brie Hessian three, and Ashley Salmon got one as well. So five goals between them, and Dervla Horkin got the other one. So that is their team. Let's move on to Kalastia Oriel now. And this school is... Um, well, the team is, is coached through Irish. They're taught through Irish in their school. Irish language is the primary language in the school, so I'm going to do my best here. And <coughs> bear with me. I know some of these girls from last year. Orna Kelly, Nee Kelly is in goals. Number two is Anya Nidoffy. And number three is Scarlett Niarain. Number four, Abby Finnegan. Five, Abby Nicaroline. Six, Unin Ni Honula. And that is the captain, uh, Unine Connolly, would be the translation. She is from Scotstown, so I'll try and give both as, as I can. Lauren Nivarki, and that's uh, Lauren Markey, at number seven. At midfield, you have Breed McNally, and you have number nine is Leah Nconaghan, and that's in the Larna Parka. Number 10 is Kerry Ann Walsh from Cardiff Gales, Kerry Ann Brannock. Holly McQuaid at number 11, you will know from the Ulster winning team last year in the minors they won up at Corrigan Park and she was one of the stars and Holly Nick Udge is the translation in Irish and the total for her would you believe in the Ulster final against Sacred Heart from Newry was two goals and eight points she was player of the match then of course we're going to pause now for the anthem What a noise being created by those supporters in the blue and white from Claire Morris. The whole town is in blue and white at the minute. There's bunting all over the town. Everyone has come out to support them. And today they are out in numbers as well. Not so much from the Monaghan School, but certainly a very loud support with plenty of flags from Claire Morris. And on the live chat on YouTube as well, we have support for Claire Morris from Shane Curran, who's already been on, wishing Mount St. Michael. 
Claire Morris, every success. You can comment as we go on on the live chat there on YouTube. Feel free to leave a message. Oh, I spoke too soon. The Monaghan School have arrived. Over to our left there, the supporters are now coming into the ground. We're going to swing round and show you them here. I should have known to be here. The bus was maybe just a little bit late, but I see the Borons and I see the flags and I see the painted faces and the girls and boys are here to support their team. I was nearly finished going through it, so while we look at that, I'll give you the rest. 12 is Alana Corrigan, Alana Nihurigain, 13, Dervley Nakanine, Dervla Keenan, 14, Ava Sherry, Ava Nahari, 15, Kiva McCallan, Kiva Niwilhallen. That is the team from Colastia, Oriel in Monacon, and they are in this final today and we are delighted to be able to bring it to you and it's free absolutely free and as somebody said during the week it's for all the grannies and granddads who can't travel to Longford today well certainly there are a lot of young people here there's no doubt about that we welcome all the grannies and granddads and everyone else watching from wherever you are feel free to leave us a message and tell us where you are watching the game from and what you think of the game. Now the supporters who have just arrived from Kalashia Oriel are being moved away from the side beside us over to the far side so you'll see them in the backdrop of the shots. That'll work nicely. Now they're going to have to walk past all the Mon uh, the um, Mayo supporters. That could be interesting. Could it be a battle of the, the flags and the banners and the noise over there? Oh my goodness. Look at the balls in the air. <laughs> they're hilarious over there. And the far side. They're really enjoying their day out. Now we're nearly ready for the main part of the day. That's the game. And it is Claire Morris playing from right to left as we watch it. Claire Morris in the blue and white. There's going to be a battle to see who's the noisiest. So I hope you can hear me okay. The ball bounces kindly and it's Alana Fitzpatrick on the ball already. The number eight giving it in to Brie Hessian. We mentioned her. We expected her to be playing in and around the square, but she's already out around the half forward line. In fact, right half forward. That's a bit of a surprise there possibly from the management. Two female managers today. Emma Galligan in charge. She's the manager from Moy Davids and she has help from Laura Brogan and Matthew Walsh. And Emma is also the chairperson at Moy Davids. With the play, Al oh, Kalashia Ariel have a chance right at the start. Oh, and it goes just wide and it is Holly McQuaid. And if you know her, you know that left foot is like a wand. But on that occasion, a little bit early in the game, she just put it wide. Goalkeeper Kira Brennan. Tall goalkeeper. And she gets a good kick on that as well. I'm trying to judge if there's any wind. Not really today, a little bit, and it's quite chilly. But I don't think it'll have too much of an impact. Now, there's a bit of a misjudgment, which means that Amy Cummings is on the run. The number 13, she got a goal in the semi-final. Heather Slattery is pointing where she wants it, but instead at Hessian. And she finds the target. We told you to watch out for her. She's not playing around the square. She's immediately running back to the right half forward position. But then again, positions don't mean too much. On the far side, you'll just see in the background of the shot there, now the Kalashia Oriel supporters walking past. So you see the flags intermingling there and a little bit of a battle between them. But good, honest rivalry between these schools obviously they never played against each other before at this level this all-ireland final the Lidl post-primary schools b championship final we have the a final tomorrow for you but look at the talent that's on here that's kiva Mc mccallum but it's been intercepted quite easily it's looked once or twice that they might get in behind they did get in with one chance early on it went wide and that time it was intercepted but the threat is there they're certainly going up the middle that's Fitzpatrick looking to find her number nine, actually. That's Dervila Harkin, who seems to be playing in an advanced position and not in midfield. So a bit of a surprise tactically there to any of us who don't know the team. But yeah, Harkin is not playing around midfield. This girl is, though. That's Leah Cunningham. Leah gets the ball in, and they are getting in. I said they got through once or twice, and now it could be their first score of the game, and indeed it's gone over the bar from Kerry Ann Brannock from Cardiff Gales. The first score on the board for the girls from Monacon. Ready, 
one point each early on in bright sunshine here in Longford. Great atmosphere being created by the supporters. And great football on the pitch as well. This is Bridge McNally. It was brilliant last year for Monaghan when they won the Ulster Minor Championship. She's a key player here today, as is Corrigan. Referee says play on, that's not a foul, good defending. Clara Morris come away with it. Now this is the important ball into the forwards and there is Horkin. I told you she was playing in an advanced position. She's playing as a full forward. She gets it off the shoulder from Ashley Salmon. She's gonna go for her score and it works perfectly. No, it doesn't, it just goes to the right. The crowd noise went up for it. I thought it was over on that side, but it's gone wide. But you can see there the tactic, the change by the management and it seems to be working. Didn't quite hit the target, but it certainly got that far. This is Abby Nicaroline number five, doing good work down the right-hand side and being helped by the number 15 all the way back there. That's Kiva Newell Hallen. Number two is Anya Nee Duffy. But it's actually going to be taken by McNally. She boots it into the corner and says, chase that one. And they do. Sherry is chasing for it and does well up against the captain, Hessian. Gives it out to McQuaid. Back to Sherry and her kick is a little bit ambitious from there. You can see what she was trying to do, trying to use the wind, but it's gone wide. Remains one point apiece. We are monitoring your comments on YouTube, so thanks for that. Keep them coming. Annette Flynn is on and says, Frank Donnelly, Claire Morris, wishing her granddaughter Nina the very best of luck. We have a microphone placed at the side of the pitch and you can hear the atmosphere coming across brilliantly on that and you can see the supporters over on the far side, the Monaghan supporters up at the back of the stand staying out of the sun. It's a bit chilly out of the sun but the play on the pitch is certainly heating things up and things are starting to tick over. Alana Nahuragain, number 12 for Kalasha Oriel puts them in front for the first time in the game. Super score on her left foot. Brennan's kick out is very accurate, but there's two maroon jerseys there and they get it. And it's Kalasha Oriel with their center half back and captain from Scottstown. Oh, and there's another point for them. Brilliant score. They pressed on the kick out and the forwards did the rest. Three points to one after trailing by a point to no score. They have recovered extremely well, Kalasha Oriel. 3-1 up. Brennan goes to the same side with a kick out. And it works this time because Nina Wallace has it. She gets her free. Blue jerseys and blue boots. Actually, she's allowed to play on. So she does. There's a nice little ball popped in. And this time it was looking for Bree Hessian. Didn't get there, but Bree comes back and may get it. There's a lot of girls spilling balls out there, as you would expect. A lot of nerves out there. Orioles seem to have got into their stride a little bit better. She got a point a minute ago, Nahuragain, and she's off again. And this time she's the supplier to Eva Nahari, the full forward. She gets on her right foot. You can see what she was trying to do. She looked around. She said, do you see this? That's what she can do. Four points to one. Good work by Kira Nyland, number 11. Now, can Claire Morris respond? They've conceded four in a row. They keep going for that low ball in. And this time it does get to Hessian, and she's a bit of room, but it's brilliantly blocked by McNally. They come again, though, and it's Salmon. Brilliant block again. Fantastic work, fantastic defending. Oh, these girls have been coached brilliantly. Two superb blocks. 
This is Nahura again, again. She does well to get it up as far as McQuaid, but she's obviously been marked out as a player to watch. She's been closely followed all through by Jenna Mortimer. And this is Alana Fitzpatrick coming through now. The two number eights clashing. Oh, she bursts through. That's fantastic play, and she gives it to Horkin. This is much better, and Hessian's there, and that's her first chance of the game. Now, it's been deflected. It's gone right. It's gone wide, but it's actually going to be a 45, and it's another brilliant block. A really lively start, as you would expect to this game. On YouTube, Elaine says best of luck to MSTM, and Ellis Higgins says let's go Mount St. Michael, bring it home girls. A lot of support for the Claire Morris girls. Now a chance for Claire Morris, but it's going to drop short. Greeted by enthusiastic applause from the opposition. Now this is Anya Nidoffi. That's good work by her, battling through two challenges, but then she's dispossessed, and Amy Cummings has it. Free for Mount St. Michael. Now this girl's been very lively, Fitzpatrick. She's trying her best to get her team going and that's Salmon out there. She got a goal against Ballon Collig in the semi-finals and they're looking to try and get the short ball into the full forwards and looking for Hessian a lot, but it's not really working, it has to be said. 10 minutes in, they've got one point and that was the first score of the game, but since then, Oriol have Settled very nicely, and they're knitting the play very well as well. There's McQuaid looking for Sherry, and that has been the main link right up the middle. And she's got a great kick on her, and she's in the groove. She has a great way of turning on to her right side and looking up, and you know exactly what she's going to do. Stopping her is another thing. Five points to one for the team from Ulster. Kick out goes to the left this time and bounces kindly for Amy Cummings. She's playing around the middle a lot, gets it to Dervla Horkin. This is Hessian. Oh, she's looking to give it back to Horkin and she might get in here for a goal chance, but she goes to ground and the referee gives a penalty. I thought she lost her balance there. Now she obviously got a touch as well. That's what the referee is saying and it's a penalty. Drama. Claire Morris, you see it again there. The two number eights coming together. And the referee says this is a chance for Mount St. Michael to get back into the game. Five points to one. And of course, it's Brie Hessian. 3-4 she scored in the semi-final. Now she's up against Orna Nikelli. She's coming up right-footed. What way is she going to go? They need this one. Oh, she strikes it well, but strikes it at the goalkeeper and Orna Nikelli does brilliantly to tap it over the bar and the supporters from Colastia Oriel go crazy brilliant save we see it again struck well but pretty much straight at her and she tipped it over it's still a point though so it's 5-2 Hessian now gets it and gives it inside and this is Salmon and is that on target? It's just inside the post. It's five points to three. They didn't score the penalty, but they've got a point from it. And another one, almost as good. It's back to 5-3, and they are back in the game. Now we have a game on. That's Abby and the Caroline, number five involved. There gets it back to the fullback, Scarlett. The Arine from Monaghan Harps. But it's turned over. Nina Wallace has it. And she just pops a nice ball into Salmon. And they're motoring now, Mount St. Michael. Oh, and they've good speed and they're a good direct team, but defended well. Oh, and there's a lovely ball out of defence, actually, looking for Nawila Hallen. 
but it doesn't quite stick. Claire Morris will come again. I was a little bit concerned about them conceding five points in a row, but I need not have been. This is Cummins. She gives it to Slattery. Just been kept out and that was blocked again. That's I think the fourth block. Good discipline defending and on the attack they're good too. This is McQuaid. Good help from Kiva McCallan. And again, they're looking, of course, for Sherry in there. Sherry, the ball pops over the top. Oh, and the captain was caught out there and only Megan Commons come in and saved the day. That could have been a goal at the other end. Good pressure again. We've seen blocks at the back. Now we're seeing blocks in the forwards. That time by Dervla Nikanin. Good work again, and the kick comes in from McQuaid, but I think the wind is catching it, to be fair. It's swirling around a little bit, and some of those kicks from distance are just not going to make it. Unless, of course, you're Ava Sherry. Now, the number nine has come over. That's Leah McConaughey from Oriel to the sideline. I'm not sure what that's about. I think it uh, needs a bit of treatment. In fact, down at the dugout here, the man actually calling for the treatment is an interesting guy. That's Desi Moan. Desi Moan played 16 years for Monaghan. You see him there in the red bib, and he is calling the referee's attention because I think his midfielder is getting a little bit of treatment there. We can't quite see her, but she is there. She came over a minute ago, and she's getting a little bit of treatment. So that's what the hold-up is for on YouTube. Thank you for your messages. We welcome them. And there is a shout-out to the boys left behind in Colostia Oriel. Up the girls. Thanks for that. And Jamie Lawler says, come on, Kalastia Oriel, do it for Muncher Aoife, Muncher Neve, and Muncher Aideen. Well, they're doing it for the whole school, I think. And they're doing very well so far as well. So keep those messages coming on the YouTube channel. That's where the game is. That's the only place you can watch it. And we'll have the A final tomorrow on the same ladies football YouTube channel. So... A quarter of the way through the game. We've just gone over 15 minutes. Five points to three. We've had a penalty saved. We've had goal chances. We've had lots of brilliant blocking, lots of great football. Oh, she fancies it again. And uh, Sherry, although that time, no, it's a, a pass. I thought it was a little bit ambitious from out there. Oh, what a pass. What a brilliant pass into space. There's a chance for the first goal. Brilliantly saved, though. Dervla, Nikanine, but it still might end up in the net. No, Hessian comes to the rescue and didn't Kira Brennan do well there. She stood tall and saved. What a pass and what a save. you got to stand tall. That's exactly what she did. She made sure she got in the way, didn't commit herself too early. That's an important save. And Brennan now has the ball. And her kick out is good as well because it finds Mortimer. No, actually, that's Dervla Horkin. She's now come out from the full forward area. She'd been playing in there, wearing number nine. Now out around the midfield area. And that's good play by Slattery. That's a super pass, in fact, to Nina Wallace. Nina looks to attack, but great tackling. Oh, that's fantastic stuff there by the captain. That's Fitzpatrick slipping it inside. They're trying to find a way through. Can they manage it? Slattery blocked yet again. That time it was McNally back there. Oh my goodness, you really have to praise the coaching in the schools and in the clubs because these girls have done that brilliantly so far. All over the pitch, it has to be said. Overcarrying results in a free for Mount St. Michael. Taken by Alana Fitzpatrick. She goes high and direct, but it's not accurate. Hessian didn't see that one landing. And it was well read instead by Scarlett Naarin. She's from Monaghan Harps, as is the number two beside her, Anya Nidoffi. 17 minutes gone, five points to three. Claire Morris behind, but they are doing a lot of the pressing. Rona O'Day now comes forward, but Turned over once again back there, and it's McNally doing a lot of great work back there. She's not just playing in Larna Parka. She's dropping deep. She's the defensive midfielder in there, and she's cut out a lot of ball. 
And the referee now calls for the water break in the 17th, 18th minute now. Now I thought the water breaks were actually being done away with from the 1st of April, but maybe it's because the competition is still ongoing. I think that's what it is. So that's why we have the water break. So this competition has been going on for a while, so it makes sense if it's been the rule all along, you gotta finish with it. Sinead Collins on the YouTube page says, enjoying the live stream here in Mount St. Michael. The TYS are cheering on our girls, bring it home. Great to hear that, Sinead, thank you. And Carol Horkin has sent us a message as well. And again, they are supporting from the classrooms. Is there no work being done today? Of course not, you're allowed that. You're allowed to watch the match, or maybe it's lunchtime. Adele Nolan says, let's go MSM, bringing back lovely memories when we last won the All-Ireland in 2010. She says, bring it home to Claire Morris again. Yep, Mount St. Michael did it 12 years ago. The last two years, of course, we didn't have this competition before that. It was won by St. Patrick's Academy in Dungannon. So is it going to stay in Ulster? The talking being done down there by Emma Galligan and Laura Brogan, the management team in there. Sending their team out for the second quarter. It's frantic stuff, but there's a lot of great football being played out there. And our clock has stopped, and we'll start again when the play starts. We're at 17 minutes and 39 seconds. The scoreline doesn't really tell the story. It says no goals, but we had a penalty saved, and we had a point blank chance saved and with another just gone wide so we could easily have had goals plenty of good attacking all out football which is what you like to see now right, this is Lauren Nowarki getting it in to Kerry and Brannock she has lots of company there and has to come back out and does so to Nowarki again who comes back to Caroline. And there's a crossfield kick looking for Naarin all the way up there. Now there's room in behind here, but she's going to go for the kick herself to fullback. That's confidence for you on her left foot, but just put it to the left and it goes wide. And it's been a while now since Oriel got a score, actually. They got five in a row, but not for some time. That's a good kick by Brennan looking for Megan Cummins, who managed to wriggle free for a second and gets it. But she's under a lot of pressure and comes back to her captain, Hessian, and she calmly pops it in to Rona O'Day. That's good play. A lot of girls dropping the ball. As I say, it's difficult in these conditions and maybe nerves out there as well. And that's good support play. The number nine and the number eight, the midfielders combining there. Corkin and Fitzpatrick, but the kick just carries over the end line. So it remains five points to three, and it remains frantic. Goalkeeper is Orna Nikelli. A penalty save behind her. She plays that one low out to the wing, looking for Scarlett Naarin, and she does get it eventually. And now they will build going forward with the captain. She sees grass in front of her. She runs into it and makes sure that she gets Holly McQuaid possession. She leaves it off. This is Kerry Ann Brannock. Nikanine is there. There's a good dangerous high kick and Sherry is there. Oh, Hessian got a vital touch to that one. And Sherry keeps it in, but only for Hessian. That's a really good battle between those two in there. It nearly dropped kindly, but Hessian had it covered. But that kick goes straight to Kerry Ann Brannock. And that's the number three all the way up there again. So she's obviously not staying in the full-back area. Free for Claire Morris. And referee actually apologizes and says that it's a free the other way. He corrects it. And makes it clear what it was for as well. On YouTube, Linda Hessian says, come on, Mount St. Michael. They're 5-3 down. They need a little bit of encouragement. Could be 6-3, but that's going to drop short and it's going to go wide as well. So we're into the 21st minute, nearly 22nd minute. 
and it's five points to three for the team from Ulla. Brennan's kick out is good. She finds Nyland. Strong challenge coming in again, and that's one of the features of the play from Kalastia Oriel. Good tackling all over the field. Defense starts in the forwards. And they've turned it over again with another good tackle. They're very, very good at that. They've been well coached, clearly, by the likes of Fiona Patton. Maybe a bit of help from Desi Moan. He knows a little bit about defending and tackling as well. This is Anya Niduffy. She's got support there from Keenan. She looks to get it in quickly towards McQuaid. McQuaid's going to have to battle for it. She does that. Ball spills, though, and O'Day does really well. And eventually, the referee says, let's just hop it. Eleven and fourteen are in there. That's Eva Nahari and Kira Nyland in the blue. And it spills and is collected in there very smartly by Fitzpatrick. She's been really good in this game, really lively. And she was certainly alert there to the ball. This is Mortimer. Now, that's a nice little intricate ball in there, but it's well scooped up and claimed by Breed McNally. And that's been a feature of this game as well. She's done great work in there defensively. And for some reason, Mount St. Michael keep playing a low ball in there in the tight spaces, and it's not always working. They've tried a few high ones as well. Maybe it's just the defense is too good. McQuaid, oh, what a brilliant ball. There's a goal chance here now. And it's Corrigan in there. She tries to get round the keeper and smashes it. Oh, it's brilliantly saved. What brilliant cover on the line. And Claire Morris escaped. Looked like a certain goal. They've threatened a few times. They threatened again. Goalkeeper was beaten, but a brilliant, brilliant clear, clearing block on the line. Clearing catch on the line. Got herself in the right position at the right time. And that was absolutely fantastic. And it was the number five back there, Rona O'Day. She's made a great start to the game. Saved her team there. Still no goals in this game. I think we might be having a substitution, actually. I see a flag down there, and it looks like O'Day, who's just made the save. Is she coming off? She is, you know. I'm surprised about that. Obviously, they made the decision before that vital save on the goal line. But she has come off. Rona O'Day is off. Trying to see who's going on for her. I'll try and pick that up. Meanwhile, back with the game itself. Kalasha Oriel again coping with everything that has been thrown at them. And they are dangerous on the break. The 14, Ava Sherry, has come very deep now. She's come out of the full forward area. And that's why May Hessian, the full back and captain for Claire Morris, is on her own in there. So they're switching things around a lot trying to catch out the defence but Mount St. Michael now seem well organised and that kick is high could be dangerous if they don't watch it and a spill there and that's up for grabs but Hessian the captain comes in and grabs it gratefully, tries to clear now that's eventually going to reach Nyland I think number 11, no it's been scooped up off the ground by the midfielder Cunningham and that kick is going to the right and wide comes to nothing in the end but very interesting play in there you definitely feel that there's a goal in there at some stage and I did see a substitute in there I'm trying to catch the number again for you to see what that switch was great kick out by Brennan and it cuts out a lot of the opposition and sets Kieran Nyland off on the attack lots of grass in front of her and Kalasha Oriel dropping very deep and again they're just trying to play that tight ball in there to the full forward he's coming out all the time and it keeps getting turned over this is Nicaroline and as I look off camera now it's very clear that May Hessian is standing in the full back position a lot on her own and there's another shot from distance but Kalasha Oriol after scoring five points in a row haven't scored now for at least ten minutes and They've been taking on a lot of chances, but taking them from bad positions and putting them wide, apart from the two goal chances. I'm talking about effort at efforts at points.
Brennan's kickouts have also been very good. And this is Shiva McNulty, the number two, coming up. They've been very good getting this far, Claire Morris. But after this, it doesn't work so well. I wonder, will this be different? It is, you know, they finally got it in to Brie Hessian. Can she keep it in? She does. Does very well, actually, to get a boot on it and to get a teammate into the play. But Kalastia Oriel have a very good defensive setup in there. And as I say that, they give away a free. But they have kept them out. There's been three points only scored down to our left. 26 and a half minutes gone. Sun coming in and out behind clouds here in Pierce Park in Longford. Bree Hessian will take the free that you just saw being awarded. And it's dangerous. It's dipping in there and it might just creep wide and it does. Could easily have been deflected into the net. And again, just looking off camera for you, May Hessian standing on her own. So Kalastia Oriel have sacrificed their full forward to come out around the middle of the field to try and get into the play more. And then they'll build it up the pitch, but that's good tackling. I've praised one team's tackling. Let's praise Claire Morris as they've turned that over and they've got it to Slattery. This is where the problem is, though. They can't get near the goal. Can they get in this time? It's Wallace there, but again, great defending, disciplined work in there. Good structure. And they stand firm. But that kick has gone straight to Cummins. And she drops the shoulder, comes inside. And from distance, Fitzpatrick fancies it, puts it very high in the air. This would be a great score if it goes over, and it does, you know. That's the way to beat the defensive structure. Take your score from distance, and she took it very, very well. She's been one of the best players in the first half, and she brings it back to a one-point game. This is the captain. Holds it up nicely, gives it to... The fullback, the Arain. And that's Lauren Niwarki, number seven for Kalastia Oriel. They've got the heads up. They're looking to see where to go with it. This is the fullback again, and she pops it in really nicely there into Holly McQuaid. There's room in behind, you know, if she can get her head up and get the ball, but that's easier said than done. Now they get it in to Dervla Nikanine, but it's been turned over. Great defending from Claire Morris this time. And this is one of the features that you see in the game these days. I remember last year's Ulster Under-14 final and was really impressed by the Cavan Under-14s tackling. Really disciplined, brilliant tackling. They'd really been coached really well, and so are these girls. But you'd expect that in an All-Ireland final. And again, it's the Kalastia Oriel defence that prevails. They have thwarted so many attacks in the first half. Over carrying given. Free in for Claire Morris. Can they level it before half time? I am checking your YouTube comments. Claire O'Brien, come on, St. Michael. Believe in yourselves. We're all behind you. Margaret Walsh, good luck to Mount St. Michael. Great save from Kira. It certainly was. This is Dervla Harkin, the number nine. And she's held up, though. And look who it is, Dervla Nikanine, all the way back there, defending from corner forward, the number 13. They're brilliant defenders all over the pitch. And great coming out of defence too. This is the captain from Scotstown, Unin Nahumyala. Brilliant play. But turned over again. These teams are well matched. Maeve Malarkey, good luck to the girls in blue. Up Claire Morris. Shane Curran says, Ashling Cummins has come on for Runa O'Day. Thanks for that. I was trying to spot that number. So that means that the twins are on the pitch. The Cummins twins are both on the pitch. Ashling Cummins, number 19. Amy Cummins, number 13. Now, the ball in low works this time because it gets to Wallace, who leaves it off to Hessian. She feints to shoot but then comes inside and a kick from distance that looks good actually and that could be the equalizer it is from Kieran Nyland we are level in added time at the end of the first half brilliant first half of football the referee looks at his watch and I think he's going to call it there 
and he does indeed. He lets the ball be kicked out, and we end where we started, level. 30 minutes and 48 seconds have been played. A very entertaining first half. We hope you have enjoyed it. Thanks to Lidl. This is the Lidl All-Ireland Post-Primary Schools B final. And it's completely free for you to watch. As is tomorrow's A final. We'll have that for you as well from Brough in Limerick. But it's all about the B final right here. In the second half we'll find out who gets over the line. Or we might end up with added time the way things are going. We hope you've enjoyed it so far. And... Um, I was told before the game, you know, that Kalastia Oriel had scored 19 goals in five games and Mount St. Michael had scored 21 en route to winning Connacht and then another six in the semi-finals. And of course, after all that, not a single goal this afternoon so far. But we did have a penalty saved and lots of goal chances, lots of great football, really entertaining stuff. Tomorrow, as I said, the A final is on. Let's talk to a couple of the players involved in that one right now. Hi, I'm Dara Canary, I'm 18 and I'm from St Mary's High School in Middleton and I'm playing with Liz Gould. And what's it like to be here in Crow Park today? It's amazing, it's unreal, a brilliant opportunity for all of us. What are your memories of this place? Have you been here before to watch games or to play out there? Our memories, I played Gaelic for Girls Blitz ages about 10 years ago and we were here with playing Dublin in the league a few weeks ago, so they're great memories. And tell me, years ago would you have come here as a fan to watch the All-Ireland Finals and who would your heroes be? Yeah, I remember coming to watch, I think it was 2017 and they just missed out unluckily, but it was amazing to watch all the girls, Roisin Keelan and Emer Meany and everyone like that. And you were telling me earlier you know a few of the girls who retired before then, even you go back a bit, you know your Cork team, you know the team who won so many All-Irelands. Yeah, I know, I've read Relentless and I've been watching the matches back and everything in lockdown and stuff, so Deirdre O'Reilly and Angela Walsh and everyone from that team really would be stars. I notice that you pick out defenders as well. Those are all defenders and brilliant defenders back in their day. I mean, Deirdre had, had no fear. Yeah, oh, absolutely fearless. Like, I could only wish to be half of what they were with their, their tigerish defending and all that. T yeah, amazing. And as a captain now of this team, can you tell me about your team? Who have you got coming through? Who are the girls that we should look out for? Our team, we've a load of standout players and we, everyone is working hard to get a spot on the team. Like, it's so competitive. And I suppose a few girls would be, our goalie is really good there she's quite young but you can be confident in her and we've Rachel Leahy and you look out for that name in the future I'd say. And your management who have you got? We have Tomas McIntyre and Emma Farmer so they, they'd be experienced with playing football themselves as well so they know what it's like to be a player. And just finally this final is going to be live streamed as well so it's going to be on the big stage as well what sort of excitement is there going on around the school and indeed outside the school about this? The excitement is unreal, even since we played the Monsters, like we've been in the newspapers and everything, everyone's getting hyped up for it. So we're a really small school, so we weren't really expecting things like this, but sure, it's a great opportunity to have. When you say a really small school, how small? What do you mean? Well, uh, maybe I think about five or six hundred, but our football team wouldn't have been... It's maybe since I came in in first year that we started playing football, so we're really happy to get to this stage now. Hi, I'm Anya Gaynor. I, I play with Colliery and Moat Community School and I'm 18. And these are the Crow Park dressing rooms and you've been here before? I have. I was here last year um, with Westmead, won the All-Ireland Final, um, captained by Fiona Claffey. Talk to me about the Leinster Final. I know you won that that day, but it was a very emotional day for you. Can you tell me the story about your granny and how you reacted to that and how you recovered from it? So I think we were 10, 15 minutes into the game. Um, I got word, actually one of my best friends on the pitch uh, said your dad has to go for a family emergency. Um, I kind of knew instantly, my granny had been sick for a while, um, so word kind of got around then, my dad came on, hugged me on the pitch, there was a lot of emotion, a lot of tears rolling, um, but again, Fidelma, Niall, the coaches, the girls, everyone was so supportive, uh, the crowd as well, um, really had a huge impact, so it, it was hard to keep going, there was a few tears in the dressing room at half time again. But um, no, I think we done it for her, and it was a bittersweet day. But so you got word during the game as you were playing. During the game, yeah, the game was stopped for a few minutes. Um, my dad came onto the pitch, but we pulled ourselves together and got the outcome we deserved. I think. Yeah, you scored a goal after that. How did you pull yourself together and get yourself motivated for the rest of the game? Or I think I was kind of taken back for the first few minutes. Um, I think the support from the girls, so and the crowd. Everyone was kind of cheering us on then. Um, I was, I'm 
made a run down the centre and uh, my best friend Ava, she slipped a, a good ball to me and uh, found the net and the crowd really got behind us then and I think that kind of gave us momentum to keep going then. So I'm wondering how you even accepted the cup and did a speech after that and what, where your mind was. I mean, we've waited for that day for so long because two years ago um, we got to the all Ireland final and we couldn't play it. So this is really going to mean a lot to you. This is a really, really special year for you. Yeah, the, the school team. I can't describe it. I've like we're just we're so close. The whole all the girls. So. Hi, I'm Dara Canary. I'm 18, and I'm from St Mary's High School in Middleton, and I'm playing with Liz Gould. And what's it like to be here in Crow Park today? It's amazing. It's unreal. A brilliant opportunity for all of us. What are your memories of this place? Have you been here before to watch games or to play out there? Our memories, I played Gaelic for Girls Blitz ages about 10 years ago and we were here with playing Dublin in the league a few weeks ago, so they're great memories. And tell me, years ago would you have come?
They're in good voice during halftime, the Mount St. Michael supporters, and we have a lot of your messages coming in from Mount St. Michael as well. Gemma Murphy says, keep it up, MSM. Shout out to the girls from Hollymount, doing brilliantly. And Emma says, let's go, MSM. The Borons are out, the flags are out. What else is there? There's all sorts of stuff in there. And over to our right, not to be outdone, we have Kalashia Orioles supporters up at the back of the stand there, making plenty of noise as well. And the noise is ringing around Pierce Park in Longford, and I'm sure you can hear it a lot further away than here in the stadium. Mark McNally on YouTube says, Great defence from Breed, that's Breed McNally. Keep it up, love from Granny Gertie. I told you there was grannies watching and granddads. And Sinead Gavin says Ashley Salmon. She is the number 15 for Mount St. Michael. She says, um, let's go Mount St. Michael, giving a mention to Ashley. One of the teams has come out. It's Kalastia Oriel. Con Nolan says, good luck Mount St. Michael. Bring it home girls from Con and all in Claire, in Claire Morris. The noise is almost deafening. Even though there's not that many of them, they are making quite a din. So we have one team out for the second half. The team not out yet are the team in blue, Mount St. Michael. But here they come. You see them coming out of the tunnel below us here. There is a number 19 on there. That was a change towards the end of the first half. They brought on Ashling Cummings. No other changes at halftime. That means that the Cummings twins are both on the field now. Amy is at number 13, Ashling number 19. And they have the Horkin sisters, Dervla at nine. They have another Horkin sister in the subs, that's 23, Roisin. And of course, at three and 14, May Hessian, the captain, and her wee sister, Brie Hessian. Well, I think she's taller, actually, but you know what I mean, she's younger. And she has now gone into the full forward position. She scored three, four in the semi-final. Hasn't scored a goal yet today, and she had a great chance from a penalty, but it was saved brilliantly by Orna Nikelli. And that's why it's not 5 to not 5 at half time. One in the middle of the field from the hop ball, from the throw ball in. There's Hessian battling the number three with Holly McQuaid. She's trying to get on her left foot, but instead slips it to Sherry. Oh, she knows where the posts are, and this could be the perfect start to the second half for Kalasha Oriol and it's Sherry she's found her range right at the start Eva Nahari got it from Holly Nikudj and popped it over expertly she only needs a little bit of room and she can score from almost anywhere inside the 45 and it's Kalasha Oriol back in front they've only been behind for a few minutes at the start of the game it's McQuaid again she loves getting on her left foot it's an accurate left foot Brilliant start to the second half by two of their key players up the middle of the attack. Holly and Ava with the scores and they go two points up and I think, you know, there is a bit of a breeze in support of Kalasha Oriol in the second half and boy, have they used it right at the start. This is Lorna Burke, the number seven, trying to help them get out. And this is Megan Cummins. Lots of pressure being exerted there and they're having to work really hard and they've been turned over. Brilliant work by Kalastia Oriel to turn it over. Pressure coming from the forwards. You love to see that, especially if you're a defender. But great defending there by Shiva McNulty, the number two for Mount St. Michael to turn it back over. But they've given it right back. Never mind keeping possession for five minutes that you see sometimes in the modern game, more so in the men's game. This is all out, go for it, see what you can do. Good attacking football, there is a sub on the field actually. I see a number two there, that's 20 actually. It's a number 20 for Kalashia Oriel. And that is Avian McCormick into the play now. So she must have come on at half time. So a change there for Kalashia Oriel. I might be able to work out who's gone off or someone will probably tell me on the YouTube live chat there. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to go into the live chat there and leave a message. That chance has gone wide. The cheer went up as if it was a score, but it actually went wide. Kick out right up the middle, but it's going to the captain. 
and she just taps it to her teammate. That's good work by the captain Connolly. Now, Kerry Ann Brannock. Kalashi Oriel really motoring at the start of the second half. And this is another score for them, brilliantly taken by Leah McConaughey. Three points up, and we haven't even played three minutes at the start of the second half. Oh boy, what a start they have made. They have really made a break for glory right at the start of the second half. Three points, and all taken from distance as well. Looking good for the Ulster girls now. It's Claire Morris pinned in. And even when they get the ball, with Cummins there, for example, they have to work really hard to get outside their 45. They're just about managing it now. This is Alana Fitzpatrick. She is always looking to dart through, and she does that in his fouls. Referee will take a note for that. I think that will be a tick. But Claire Morris look a little bit stunned. That's nearly intercepted. Free given for Claire Morris. They're edging their way up the pitch. That's good running by Hessian to get possession. She definitely is their main threat, but as you can see, she's been forced to go sideways, not direct, but she does leave it off expertly, and that shot has just gone inside the post from Nina Wallace. Brilliant score, made by Hessian, finished by Wallace. Her grandparents are watching. Her mum, Olive, is here on the sideline taking pictures. I hope she got a nice snap of that one because that was a perfect score. And it's important as well for Claire Morris after conceding three to get back into the game. Brings it back to a two-point game. But the signs are looking a little bit ominous for Claire Morris because Kalasja Oriel, when they get it forward, they do take their scores rather well. Oh, and there's a lovely ball in behind as well. That's a superb pass, and it goes to the substitute. McCormack, and there's a chance of a goal, and it's saved again by Brennan from McQuaid. That's twice she saved him. O'Day saved him in the first half when the keeper was beaten. They haven't conceded a goal yet, but boy, it looks like it's coming. There's the chance, there's the save. Brilliant work by the goalkeeper, Kira Brennan. And that's Brennan again now with a kick out. They're two points down, but it could be a lot worse, and they are hanging on a little bit. This is Horkin back there doing good work, but she has fouled. Going to be a free out, and Horkin looks to have taken a bit of a knock there. On YouTube, Diane Tierney says, bring it back where it belongs. Well, Mount St. Michael did win this 12 years ago. That's what she's referring to. And here they come again. This is good work by Kira Nyland. She got the last score of the first half to level it. And she's been fouled again. And that's three or four fouls in the last few minutes by Kalasja Oriel. And they seem to be intent on stopping the runners all over the field. And I praised them in the first half of their tackling. It was mainly legal. But the last three or four have all been penalised. Now, the kick from distance, is it going to reach? It is, you know. That's the way to punish fouling from... Bree Hessian and she brings it back to a one point game Claire McAreevy says Kalasja Oriel you've got this all teachers left in the school sending our support I hope you're all watching there in the staff room at lunchtime and maybe in the classrooms as well or even on the phones under the desk come on you have to let them watch it's a special special day for the school they're on the brink of something very very special as well if they can win this this is Holly McQuaid been forced out by May Hessian, but she comes inside, might get it back as well. She doesn't actually, but that's a really good effort. Now it's dropping short. All oh, the goalkeepers misjudged it. Could end up in the net. It does end up in the net. It's a goal. Alana Nahuragain pounces for Kalasha Oriel. They score the first goal of the game. You see it again, dropping in here, cause all sorts of danger. There's wind there and it bounced everywhere. But Alana Nahuragain was there to pounce. That could be the goal that sends Kalasja Oriel to the crown of all Ireland champions. 
All of a sudden, it's a four point gap between the teams. Now, that could actually, strangely enough, spur Claire Morris into action. It could energize them a little bit. They really need to lift it now. Sometimes that just happens during games. It's 1 8 to 7. Four points in it. 38th minute of the game. We knew it was coming. I did say it was coming. And there it arrived. Not in the way we expected it to arrive. The goalkeeper has been so good throughout the game as well. Just a little bit unlucky there. Oh, and that's brilliantly turned over. Referee says it was a legal tackle as well. But the fullback, Scarlett Naarain, was there. And now it's the captain. Turned over again. Turned over one side, turned over again. It's that kind of game. And the referee's going to hold it up now a little bit because uh, there's a player down over on the far side. So I'll go and check your YouTube messages. Let's go, Kalashia Oriel. And all the Scotstown girls drive it on now. So that's from Rice Lifestyle. And we also have a strange YouTube name there. Velvet Cloud Sheep's Milk says, Go Claire Morris girls. Linda Hessian says, Well done. Kira Brennan, great save. Yes, she made a great save just before the goal and a great save in the first half. Sherry Fitzgerald Hanley says, well done, Claire Morris. Jamie Lawler, cheering you all on. And Mary Rose McLaughlin, good luck to Nina Wallace and MSM from the McLaughlin family in Kilbeg. Noel Braslin, Abu Kalashja Oriel, Conan Murphy, take it home, Oriel from all in Emmyvale. And Claire McAreevy. Also for the same school. I think I read that out already. She's watching in the school. And Rosaline Ruan. Come on, Claire Morris. Bring it home from all at Decare Dental. They're watching even in the dentist. And Paula Walsh says, Keep it lit, Mount St. Michael. Watching from home in Claire Morris. <laughs> Blaine O'Toole says, Well done, Gary Moore. So those are all the messages coming in. We have over 500 watching on YouTube. And that's 500 devices, so that's a big crowd of people watching. That shows the interest. These are the stars of the future, and this is a great game we're having here today. And it's still very much in the balance, though Kalasha Ariel have made a break for the finishing line, and that's great football. The fullback, Scarlett Naarin, and she gets it again on that left foot. It's been very effective in this first half, and that's a great score. She's wearing three. But she's playing up in the attack. She's been playing great passes in. She played one in there, got it back from McQuaid, put it over the bar, and they're now five points up. Now, Claire Morris have it all to do. Brennan with the goal kick again going high, but it goes straight to Kiva Noel Hallen. This is Kerry Ann Brannock, but Hessian turns that one over. This is good football from Claire Morris. They need to get up the field, but look at the pressure on them. It's very hard to get up there. They get up for a couple of points, but brilliant tackling again from Kalashia Oriel. And just as I say that, that's an illegal tackle, so it's a free. That's been the pattern in the second half. They've stopped the runners in the second half to some effect. 41 minutes gone in the Lidl All-Ireland Post-Primary Schools B Championship Final in Glennon Brothers Pierce Park in Longford. Mount St. Michael, Claire Morris in blue. Coming forward, five points down. They've committed players forward. They could be in bother here. It's good work by McConaughey. McQuaid now. Getting onto that left foot. She's going to go from distance, but the goalkeeper's watching it and had to get a hand up because she nearly misjudged that. And they're trying to pounce again, and it's Nahurigain trying to get in for a second goal, but it's gone wide. That was similar to the goal a few minutes ago, except this time they kept it out. But some nervous moments in there for Mount St. Michael. Oh, that's well taken by Alana Fitzpatrick in the middle of the field. She really is a pocket rocket in there. She's not the tallest player in there, but she gets through a lot of work, and she's got a free as well, and 
the lens person on the far side is going to have a word with the referee. He's obviously seen something there as well. We have a viewer in New York. Nora says hello from New York. Let's go Claire Morris. And she mentions Ashley Salmon. That's their number 15. I think we might be having a substitution and there's another injury it looks like so we might have another stoppage the number seven Lorna Burke for Mount St Michael has come over to the side I think she's just getting some attention but I don't think she's coming off actually but yeah player down over on that far side so we have another little hold up so I'll go to your YouTube messages as Lorna Burke was back into the play Kirsty Heffernan Says Tasivko Intak Akalini MSN Abu. They are indeed wonderful. Colette McCaffrey says Bravo Akalini O Muncher Colette. And Mary Prunty also gives a little bit of support for Kalastia Oriel and Ellen O'Brien. Keep it going. Doing great from all at Emmyville. So lots of support coming in for the team in the lead at the minute. A few mini huddles in there. One on each side. And this hold up looks like it's going to take a few minutes. So the players from Kalasha Oriel have all been told to come over to the near side here. There's Desi Moan in the red bib there. And they are all being ushered in for a few minutes here. And hopefully it'll not take too long. Their management there includes Fiona Patton. Desi Moan's in there pulling them in and telling them to come in and listen and just Take a little bit of a time out here for a few minutes and refocus. Don't lose the focus. They've been, they've been going, going so well. Five points up. Great start to the second half. Level at half time. But now they've made a break for the finishing line. The goal obviously was crucial from Alana Nahurigain. Alana Corrigan, number 12 for Kalastia Oriel, pouncing to score. Huddle on the far side for the Blues, Claire Morris. Points at Michael over there with Emma Galligan, their manager. In there with Laura Brogan and Matthew Walsh. Emma from the Moy Davids Club, where she's chairperson. So she and the rest of the management team trying to get them lifted again and tell them it's not over yet. You have plenty of time here. The clock is running down, but. It will all be added on at the end as the sun tries to come out again here. <laughs> Unfortunately, this injury is taking longer than I thought. Lots of attention over there. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. James Duffy on YouTube says, let's go, girls. So thank you for all those comments on YouTube. If you want to comment, just go into the live chat area there and you can leave a comment. There's nearly 600 devices tuned in there watching the game. That's a huge audience for this game, and it's great to see. <laughs> Hope you're all enjoying the coverage live and free to watch. Thanks to Lidl, the sponsors of the whole competition, and the Ladies Gaelic Football Association. The only place you can watch it is indeed on the YouTube channel. And we'll also have the A final tomorrow. That's the Lidl All-Ireland Post-Primary Schools A Championship final from Brough down in Limerick. And we're lo looking forward to that game tomorrow. The podium now has the cup on it. There it is. Nice and shiny. Shined up for the day. Polished for the day. And the player of the match award just been popped underneath, just in case. It's made of glass and it's a bit breezy here. We wouldn't like it to fall and break. And there's the little ribbons on the cup and the last time that was presented was three years ago the last name on the cup well apart from where it actually says no cup given because of covid it's actually that's actually inscribed on it believe it or not and uh, before that 2019 st patrick's academy dungannon could be staying in ulster the way things are going that's certainly the way it seems actually had a look at the cup earlier on and before that in 2018 it was Glenna Matty from County Galway. They won it. And before that, 20, 
15 was Loretto Secondary School. And I'm just trying to read it because I took a picture of it to see if I could read it. St. Michael's Navin. That's who it was. St. Michael's Navin. Or maybe both. Is that two different schools? Maybe they shared it. And 2016 JTB Hospital. That's in Limerick, isn't it? And 2017 St. Joseph's Roachford's Roachford Bridge. Not too far from here, I don't think. So Kalastia Oreo still taking time in the huddle and the round of applause going up now because thankfully the player injured is showing signs of recovery which is great so a long delay here in the final and just at a very interesting time in the game I wonder what effect it will have on the game because Kalasha Oriol were definitely in control. They started the second half with a blitz of scores and everything seemed to be going their way. But this could change the tide a little bit. Down below us to our left there. The girls in blue are not finished yet and this might just give them the chance to say, hey, let's do something different. Let's refocus here and let's give it everything. They're just having difficulty getting up the pitch and a lot of that is down to the pressure being exerted by Kalostia Oreo. The forwards working extremely hard, not just the defenders. On YouTube, Chloe Stagg says, keep fighting, Mount St. Michael. Plenty of time. And Roisin Bikin says, Kalostia Oreo Labu. Come on, uh, Kalini. And Patrick J. Kelly says, keep up the good work. See it out, Kalostia Oreo. Paddy Kelly and all from Monaghan Harps. And they have a few players on the team and a few more in the subs from there. Scarlett the Aaron, the fullback, and Anya Niduffy, number two, both from Monon Harps, and a few in the subs as well. And I think I saw a, a Lorcan Martin down there as well with the Kalastia Oriole set up. And I see the players now having their say, and they're trying to keep warm. The supporters over there, they're gone a little bit quiet for once. They've been cheering loudly all through the game, but they're just pausing and waiting here. And we're all waiting for for the game to recommence but it's been a good five minutes now and it looks like it's going to be another few minutes as well and meantime the girls are trying to stay warm and that'll be one of the things here because the sun has gone out there is a breeze and it's very chilly so the players have to keep moving and this is bound to have an effect on the game So feel free to leave messages for us on YouTube. And even though there's not much play, the audience is going up. We're over nearly 600 now. So great interest in these games, and we're delighted to be able to bring them to you on the Ladies Gaelic Football YouTube page. And that is the scene where the officials are there and the treatment being applied as well. And Hopefully, hopefully. I don't know who the player is involved there, but hopefully she's okay. Didn't look anything too serious when it happened, but obviously it is serious. They're over the far side from us, so maybe we didn't see it full, but stretcher is there and available, so they're taking their time, and rightly so. And it's definitely a Mount St. Michael player. And as Shane says on YouTube, Hope the injured player is okay and that it's not serious. Jimmy Ryan has commented as well on YouTube, saying, Keep it going, Kalastia Oriel from all at Erog. Seems like they're watching all over Monaghan and in the school as well didn't think there was anybody left in the school thought they were all down here and we have a viewer in New York as well mentioned that a few minutes ago that's Nora and she's supporting Claire Morris so it's the Mayo girls there and you see Matthew Wallace Ma Matthew Walsh there and Laura Brogan is in there and Emma Galligan 
from Moy Davids with the Lidl on the jerseys and on the bib and Lidl know where it's at they put the money in in the right places don't they the schools is where it's at these are the stars of the future we see we saw some of them last year playing in the Ulster under 18 championship and under 16 championship from Colastia Oriole playing for Monaghan and they won the Ulster championship and the talent and skill and commitment there really is inspiring for the future both sets of supporters uniting for once in this game they've been cheering obviously for their own teams but everybody around the ground cheering now for the injured player very sad for her to have to come off at all in an all-ireland final and especially at a key point in the game but the main thing is we hope that that injury is not serious maybe they're just taking their time and making sure everything is done right but hopefully nothing too serious obviously is serious enough for her to be brought off the field but a generous round of applause from both sides and now of course Mount St Michael will have to make a substitution as well so I wonder what they're going to do who they're going to bring on and you know I see there the number 19 coming over and I wonder is it her twin sister then who is injured that's a heartbreaking scene because the number 19 is Ashlyn Cummins and the number 13 is Amy Cummins that's her twin sister and it looked the way that she came over that that's her sister and she's getting a hug there and she's gone back to her team I hope she'll be able to continue herself but that's a tricky one for her how is she going to be able to refocus there but obviously they've told her your sister's okay Now they're also going to need to bring on a player and the referee is taking his time, not rushing anything here. So they're going to give it a minute or two for players to get back up to speed before we recommence. It's like a new game almost and I suppose that's got to be the attitude from Claire Morris. Although they're five down, it's a tricky one. And it's a tricky one for Kalasha Oriel as well because they're five up and they may have thought, well, we we were flying there we had it in the bag and now they've got to get started again so it's all about the first few minutes here and who starts well but I think the momentum has been certainly from Kalastia Oriel going from right to left seems harder to get up the pitch from left to right or maybe that's just my imagination Sun's just come out again as you can see it's got a lot brighter here that's Kalastia Oriel in the maroon Now well over 600 devices tuned into the game. And now you see, I think, who the substitute coming on is. I think it's Amy Cummings who's had to go off the number 13. And 25 is now joined the huddle down to my left. And that is Kaelin Walsh. Wouldn't it be some story if she'd come on and got a goal? She's gone straight up into the attack no actually that's the 15 has gone up there where's 25 oh yeah she's gone up into the attack as well 25 there she is so it's almost like a new game except there's a five point lead for the girls in maroon here we go again still a good 16 minutes to go in this game Lots of time left. Kieran Island, number 11 for Mount St. Michael in the blue. And Scarlett Naarin for Monaghan Harps is the number three. <laughs> Off we go again then. And it's Fitzpatrick in the blue for Mount St. Michael. see a uh, number 20 there for Kalastia Oriel if you're wondering by the way she's looking to try and get on the ball now actually that's Avi McCormick she came on at half time in case you were wondering you saw that she's near the ball at the minute and might get it now no she doesn't actually because this is Carrie Ann Brannock 
And that's Kiva McCallan. And they've worked this ball in really well here. And McQuaid gives it to Sherry. And it's the combination again that started the second half so well. But very unlucky. But might end up in a goal, you know. Oh, it is, you know. She's pounced. And it's her again. It's Alana and her again. Oh, my goodness. She is so alert in there. She judged that one perfectly. She's got her second goal of the game. And her opportunism could well have won the little All-Ireland title for her school. Oh, you have to feel for Claire Morris. Five points down now, eight points down, and both goals have been a little bit freakish in nature, and that's not to take away from the opportunism of the number 12. But a little bit fortunate, or unfortunate maybe, for Claire Morris is a better way of putting it. They're now eight points down, and of course, they lost a player injured. One of their teammates has gone off. So it's a long, long way back now for them, and Kalastia Oriel are looking good. And they're coming up through the middle, and this has one of been, been one of the star performers for them. And Scarlett keeps going. She might even get on the ball again, and she does. She's got a point already to her name, but she's feeding it in now to Nehari, and she goes off the left foot this time, but it's going to go to the left and white. Brennan, the goalkeeper, goes left, but that is going to go straight to Avian McCormick. And that goal really, I think, has killed the game a little bit. And this is the goal scorer, Nehurigain, number 12. Claire Morris still working hard though, but here comes the captain for Oriel. She got to that ball first, and those are the important balls you need to get to. And she got there first and won it for her team. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is the sub who came on. This is Ashling. Yeah, that's Ashling Cummings in there, actually. Yeah, no, number 19. She came on earlier in the first half. This is Sherry. Still on the ball in there. There's two or three of them trying to stop her, and they can't. Yes, number 19 is Ashling Cummins. I think it was her twin sister who went off, but Ashling's still out there and got on the ball there. That's obviously a very tricky one for her. But she is applying herself well and getting on with it. As Eva Nahari adds on another point. And there's now serious daylight between the teams. Nine points in it. And we're actually going to a water break. I thought it might have been included as part of the long stoppage, but we are now at the water break stage. And Mount St. Michael must be wondering, what do we have to do here? Five points each at half time. They recovered well in the first half after conceding five points in a row. Got in level and then were blitzed at the start of the second half. They seem to have ridden that one out. And then they get hit with an injury. Player carried off. Then they seem to get over that and they conceded another goal. Very similar to the first one. So they must be wondering, what do we have to do? But I guess the word there is, look, something's got to go our way. we just got to keep doing the basics here, and we are still in this. They've got a full quarter to go. That's their supporters. The blue flags are down at the minute. A little bit noisier over to our right. Kalastia Oriel supporters starting to enjoy themselves. Two ten plays, seven points. Nine-point game for Kalastia Oriel. Now they've found their singing voice again. You hear the supporters from Claire Morris. Come on, you girls in blue. Brennan's kick out is collected by Kiva. McCallan and she's still on the ball driving forward and leaves it off to Cunningham and she kicks for a point from distance but it's not her distance she likes to be in and around the square pooch, poaching the goals 
Brennan's kick out goes left this time, but again it's going to go to a maroon jersey. They're very high those kick outs, and in that wind they're maybe being held up, but certainly Kalasha Oriel are reading them. That ball's the highest of the day so far though from Sherry, and it goes right and wide. So a tricky one for Claire Morris right now. They are way behind and they just need to get their hands on the ball, but they can't even do that at the minute. And there's another example. The ball's gone straight to Naarain. And she gets it back and she's dictating a lot of the play, gives it into McQuaid. Lovely punted ball inside and there's space in behind. There could be another goal here that's been really well worked. And Cunningham with a chance, but it's blocked down. Good defending. Very good defending. I think I got my Cunninghams and Corrigans mixed up a little earlier. Sorry about that. Now, Hurrigan is Corrigan. Now, Hoonagain is Cunningham. Kalasha Oriel looking for another point to make it a 10 point game, and that's exactly what Holly McQuaid has done. They're turning the screw. It's 2 11 to 7. And it's all one-way traffic. Everything is falling for the girls from Ulster. This is Lauren Nowarki. And they're just that little bit more energetic and support off the shoulder. That's what happens when you're 10 points ahead. Everybody wants the ball. It's all going for you. Lots of hard work by the blue jerseys. There's the captain out there trying to lead the way, but Kalashia Oriel are just popping it around at will. And even when it doesn't work, it seems to work, if you know what I mean. And that one smashed off the crossbar. Could have been a goal for the fullback, Scarlett Naari. And she's been one of the players of the game so far. And I think that would have maybe sealed the player of the match award. And that award is beside me here. So I wonder who that's going to go to. That'll be the next conversation topic. Now Claire Morris finally get up the pitch but it's gone over the sideline on the far side. So yeah, if you want to leave me your thoughts for a player of the match on the live chat on the YouTube channel there, feel free to do that. I'll take your suggestions. I've mentioned Scarlett Naarain, the fullback, number three. She scored a point and nearly scored a goal as well. She's obviously been playing in an advanced position but she's dictated a lot of the play and had a really good game for Kalastia Oriel. Now this is Brie Hessian. Now look at the amount of maroon jerseys in front of her. Her way to goal block, so she comes back out to Ashley Salmon. There's no way through up there, or is there? Number 25 is Kaelin Walsh, who came into the play a few minutes ago. This is Slattery. She comes back inside to Salmon. And they're being kept out. And the players for Kalasha Oriel know exactly where they should be, and they're holding their positions. Now there's a free there, but it's... A fair distance out, so disciplined, structured defending from the girls from Monaghan. Fifty second minute. Two eleven plays seven. Ten points in it. They could do with a goal here. Maybe that's why they're going short. And she goes to Jenna Mortimer, I think it was, up there. And they're trying to work it in. And they've been turned over in there. So they don't get anything. And they may now get hit on the break, although there's plenty of players back. This is the substitute, McCormack, trying to get forward. She's fouled by Lorna Burke. And it's Naarine again. Our player of the match contender but there's a few of them. This is the substitute again, McCormack. She's proving to be a handful. Does well to hold on to it and gets it to McQuaid. This is a Hurrigan. And Can she add to her tally? No, that's just gone to the left and wide, but a little bit of the fizz has gone out of the game. Substitute being lined up for Mount St. Michael. Number 18 is coming in, and that's Sienna Kelly. The management doing everything they can to try and turn this around, but the second half has not gone their way, and I think that's probably an understatement. And the player coming off is Megan Cummins, number four for Mount St. Michael. One in the middle, of course, by the number three, Naarain. 
for Kalasha Oriel. And the referee will bring this back for a free for them. I think he's saying there was a tug in the jersey there. Rachel Kinsella agrees with me. Scarlett Heron, Scarlett Naarain for player of the match number three for Kalastia Oriel. Alana Corrigan, Alana Nahurigan got the two goals, of course, so she's got to be a contender as well, although they were little opportune flashes rather than the whole game. I'm not saying she hasn't played well, but I am saying that Nairain has been in the play so much more all through the game, but she's certainly done her job well. There's no doubt about that, the number 12. Anya McQuaid says Alana Corrigan, no doubt about it. Mount St. Michael trying their best, but Breed McNally is back there. And they will be all about just not conceding goals at this point, but they have plenty of possession and they have a lot of expert players out there. I got to know a lot of these girls last year from winning the Ulster Minor Championship with Monaghan. They beat Antrim in the final. They beat Donegal. They're fabulous players. Sherry was one of them, the number 14. Holly McQuaid, another. The captain, Unine Connolly, another. And they seem to be on the verge now of adding an Ulster title with Monaghan to an All-Ireland with her school. Substitute coming in for Kalastia Oriel, and it's Aoife Fox, number 21, coming in. Player coming off is Abby in the Caroline, number five for Kalastia Oriel. Now this is Kiva Noel Hallen. Kiva McCallan, number fifteen. This is Kerry Ann Walsh. Kerry Ann Brannock. Turned over and Kira Nyland bursting away, trying to get clear. But she just cannot get clear. She's fouled actually, so it comes they'll have to come back for a free and that's been the pattern of the second half serious pressure exerted frees awarded but as you see it just allows the opposition time to get back and then they can't do anything with it this is Jenna Mortimer Mount St Michael not giving up the ghost yet They'll keep going to the end. This is Fitzpatrick. She's kept going all the way through the game brilliantly. Will they get a break? They deserve a break. There's a great shot. It comes in from Salmon, but it's well saved by Orna Nakelly. How important, when you think about it now, was Orna's penalty save in the first half. Now this is a problem for Mount St. Michael because every time that Kalastia Ariel go forward now, they find loads of room in the, around the middle of the field. Carrie-Anne Brannock exploits that and gives it to McQuaid. She's been closely watched in there, but she's on the left foot, so you have a fair idea where this is going to go. Well, usually it goes over the bar, but that time it goes to the left and wide. Any more contenders for player of the match as we watch this save? Goalkeeper watched it all the way. She can add that to her penalty save. Now, this is the substitute who's come in. This is Fox. Comes back out and gives it to Cunningham. And she puts it over expertly. They are finishing in style. Now, our clock says 57 and a half minutes, but there have been a lot of stoppages, so not exactly sure, but this is definitely a good run by Nina Wallace for the Blues from Mayo. This is good effort from them. This is Hessian trying to burst through, and she is through, and she shoots. Oh, it just has not happened today for Hessian or for her school. My goodness, three goals in the semi-final, and today a penalty saved. And that one going to the left and wide in the semi-final, that probably would have ended up in the bottom corner. 
It's just been one of those days for Mount St. Michael. It just hasn't happened. A lot of credit to this girl and her team. But there have been a few incidents that have just been down to bad luck. To their credit, they keep going. They keep coming. This is Ashley Salmon trying to get on the end of this one, and she does, you know. She'll come inside, and is there room inside for a chance here? Is there a possible goal that might liven things for the last minute or two? No, the captain is there. It's Fox again. She's been involved a lot all over the field since she's come on. This is Kelly. Substitute who came on about five minutes ago for Mount St. Michael. And this is Hessian. And they are going well now. If they can just get a, an even break in here. And that's great work in there by Harkin. She got a goal in the semi-final. She'd love to get one now just to make it interesting. And boy, they would deserve it. They deserve a break. Are they going to get it? No, that's just gone to the right and wide. And you have to feel for them. They really are trying their best. They're going forward as best they can. But it just ain't happening. I think they've only scored two points in the second half, Mount St. Michael. Deserve a lot better, but it just hasn't happened. And of course, they had that terrible injury setback as well. But it's Kalashja Oriel who are going to win this one. I think we can safely say that now. This is McNally. She gives it to Milwaukee. They're just popping the ball around now, enjoying themselves out there. But hold on a second here. Hold on. This is Ashling Cummings to Brie Hessian, trying to get free. She needs a little bit of support. She gets that support. It comes in from Wallace. The shot comes in. Oh, and it's blocked down by the midfielder in there. That's Brie McNally back there. And you have to compliment her. She's played a defensive midfield role brilliantly all day, like an extra defender in there. Right through the game, she's been in the right place at the right time and she also deserves to be contender for player of the match it's not my decision though it's not your decision so we'll see who that goes to in a few minutes time we'll stay on for the presentation of the cup and the player of the match award that'll be done right up beside us here so you'll see it up close and that's a foul on McQuaid there and the referee is definitely going to take take a tick in his notebook for that challenge So into the 62nd minute of the game. Popping the ball around confidently now. Hard to believe it was level at halftime. But now Brannock puts it over for yet another score. Makes it 2-13 to 7. A 12-point game, and that's harsh on Mount St. Michael, to be fair. Referee has a little look at his watch. And there is Scarlett Heron again in the middle of the field, getting possession and dispatching it perfectly as well. And there again in support. Gives it away, though. And it's Hessian all the way back there. Sending her team off and running. Referee sees a foul way off camera and off the ball. And he's going to bring it all the way up the field. Just inside the 45, in fact. Jenna Mortimer bringing it up to take the free from there. Referee is going to hold up a little minute here because we have a couple of subs that come on. I think 21 for Mount St. Michael is Myra Fierick. and She's going to come in for the last few seconds of this game. She can say that she played in an All-Ireland final, even if it's only for a few seconds. And she comes in for Lorna Burke. And that's the change. Probably the last change in the game. 63rd minute. They go short to Fitzpatrick. This is Wallace. The kick comes in, but it's gone to the right and wide. 
an agonizing second half for Mount St. Michael. Started with so much promise, but they've been so unfortunate. Started in sunshine, but it's now a little bit overcast and very chilly here in Longford. Not that that will bother the girls from Monaghan. They're going in search of another score, but the captain reads that one well, May Hessian. Is there one last attack in Mount St. Michael? They won this cup in 2010. 12 years on, they've made a really good effort at winning it again, but they've come up against a very strong opposition. And on the day, things just haven't gone for them. And you see that again. And there is the final whistle, and the cup is going to Monaghan. Kalashia Oriel have done it. They have won the Lidl All Ireland Post Primary Schools B final. The players celebrate. The fellow pupils coming onto the pitch to celebrate with them. A wave of support all the way from Monaghan. All the boys and girls coming on to support. That's what the All Ireland Schools title is all about. It's the whole school. It's Kalashia Oriel from Monaghan. What an effort they have made. And you have to give credit to the school because they have come all the way from their own school to win the All-Ireland Championship. What an achievement for them and for their coaches. Brilliant day for them here in Longford. They have done it. And they have done it emphatically as well. 2-13 to 7. It was all about the second half. Two goals from Alana Nahuragain. Pouncing twice to get crucial goals at crucial times as well. And they just killed off the challenge and it was a brave challenge from Mount St. Michael. But very deserving winners in the end and you have to credit the school, you have to credit the coaching that goes on in the school and in the clubs around it as well because you saw that evidenced by brilliant tackling and brilliant skills and organization through the whole game. Desi Moan is in there and so is Fiona Patton, the manager. But the whole school has done extremely well here. And over to our left, you have to feel for Mount St. Michael. They had great support here today. Lots of hugs there as well. They should be proud of what they have done to come here and reach this stage of the competition and play in an All-Ireland final. They give it a really, really good effort. They had a player badly injured in the second half. But they still kept going right to the end. And all of their family and friends and fellow pupils are out there with them as well, as it should be. So that's the scene here in Glennon Brothers, Pierce Park in Longford. Two groups, one on the left, one on the right, one of disappointment, one of ecstasy. They are the All-Ireland champions to our right. We're still on YouTube and we will stay on for the cup presentation and for the player of the match award as well, which will be made just in a few minutes, right up beside us here. So. Stay with us for that. On YouTube, Seamus Quinn says, hard luck to MSM. You give it a great shot. It just didn't happen for you on the day. I'd agree with that. Just didn't happen for them. But what a brilliant effort. Five each at half time. They leveled it just before the break. And they give it everything in the second half, despite all of the setbacks. And out there now in the middle of the pitch, they're actually out with their supporters. But the team is in a huddle. And that is over to our left, our cameraman is just swinging over to see that and you see the despondent faces in there, but I'm sure words of encouragement and support being given by the management. Emma Galligan from Moy Davids in there with Laura Brogan and Matthew Walsh. And I'm sure they're saying they are very, very proud of you all. Now in a minute or two, all those people will be making their way up beside us for the presentation. So I'm sure the word is going over to them. And I see one of the stewards going over now. Probably, in fact, there's a few stewards in there. They might be looking for the captain, try and find her in there to get her up here. If the captain comes up, the rest will follow. That's what happens in Crow Park. Works for them. We will have the presentation right beside us here. Brenda Sheehan on YouTube live chat says, huge congratulations, Kalastia Oriel. So 
So stay with us. Just a few more minutes. We'll be here. We'll pick up the presentation and the speeches as well. Big crowd watching on YouTube. And we have another game for you tomorrow. And it's the A final. This is the B final. You thought that was good. Well, we have the A final tomorrow. That's the Lidl All-Ireland Post-Primary Schools A Championship Final down in Bruff in County Limerick. So we'll have that one for you tomorrow. It's at 2 p.m. tomorrow. But today, it's all about Kalastia Oriel. And I see the captain now being brought over. She's stopping for a photograph. And the stewards are saying, OK, but come on. We need you over here to get the cup. And she is indeed coming over. And I think she's been given something as well. I wonder if she'd been given notes, maybe her speech. Sometimes man, uh, captains think it's bad luck to do a speech, but she might have a few notes. Anyway, she's coming over, and the other players are making their way over. The captain is Unin Connolly from Scotstown. Unin ni Hunyola. And I keep giving the Irish language versions as much as, as I can because Calastia Oriel is an Irish language school. Irish language is a primary lang language in the school. The girls were coached in Irish. They're taught in Irish. And in fact, I heard their team talk before the game, and it was in Irish as well. Now, Colostia Oriel players coming over, and they seem to be forming a little bit of a huddle. I was hoping they are going to come up here for the presentation, but they seem to be stopping there for a huddle separate from all of their supporters. Sometimes managers like to get in and have a few words and get them all in first before the presentation, but the stewards are down there and hopefully they're impressing on them. They need to get up here and get this cup. But no, I think there is a speech going on. There is indeed, yes. So that must be the manager. Do you know what it is? It's the manager from the other team is speaking to them. That's what it is. So she's obviously congratulating them and saying, well done, get up and get that cup and enjoy the moment. I also saw one of the Mount St. Michael players there Ashling Cummings, the number 19, coming over, breaking away from the big group of Mount St. Michael people out on the pitch there. And obviously she is wanting to see that her sister's OK, Amy, who went off injured. And I think the players are going to be coming up here. And indeed they are. They're coming up led by their captain and the supporters will stay down below so you're going to see it all here we have the cup just over to our left there it is now and con is there poised looking sharp in his nice suit to present the all ireland trophy and he's just waiting a second for a few more of the players to come up i wonder who the player of the match is now my money is on the number three but it's not down to me. Monaghan Institute message on YouTube. Congratulations, Kalashi Oriel from the staff and learners in Monaghan Institute. Shane Curran says, well done to the referee, Shane Curley and his uh, officials. Great gentlemen. job, guys. On behalf of ladies football, I'd like to welcome you here to Lennon Brothers Pierce Park, Longford, for the uh, Lidl All-Ireland post-primary CJB final. Uh, and a great final. I want to compliment both teams. Um, the Oriel from uh, Monaghan and uh, Mount St. Carmel from Clare Morris. Uh, can I just say at the outset, on behalf of everybody here, uh, our thoughts are with Amy Cummins from uh, Mount St. Carmel, and we wish her the best. <laughs> Again, I want to compliment both teams. Great game of football. Uh, congratulations to Nave Oriel and uh, Monaghan. Uh, you certainly were the, strong, the stronger team on the day. Um, I'm sure your management were wondering at times what were you doing, but sure, that's what managements do. But well done to you. Fantastic achievement. And onwards and upwards into the A competition. And uh, so you have something to aim for. Uh, sorry, Mount St. Michael. There I go again. I got that wrong. Mount St. Michael from Clermaris. I want to compliment you. Because after the injury there to Amy, uh, as a group of players, it's hard at times to recover from that. You kept fighting till the end, you kept at it, and that's a great sign. And with the help of God, you'll be back here again in an All-Ireland final next year. And well done 
to the Claire Morris ladies. <laughs> Just a few thank yous. I want to thank the referee and all his team uh, doing a wonderful job. I want to thank uh, the Glennon Brothers, Pierce Park crew here, uh, the grounds people. Again, this pitch, I know it for years, is in great condition. Compliments to them. And I want to compliment all our officials here from LGFA doing the gate and looking after things for us. Uh, and again, without these people, there's a lot of them here. Without them, the job wouldn't get done. And I want to compliment all those people. Um, first job is player of the match. And uh, yes, it comes from Kalos to Ariel. Uh, there was certainly three or four players. Uh, there was certainly a bit of discussion after the match. But in the end, it goes to number 12, Alain Lenny Corridor. Three cheers for you. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. 
I think she's done now. That is Unine Connolly there. And that is the team from Colastia Oriel celebrating with the Lidl All Ireland Post Primary Schools B Championship final. The Olays go up, and they're also going up in the other final that's been played today, and it's been won by Sacred Heart Clonakilty. They won the All Ireland Lidl Ireland Post Primary Schools senior C final sounds like a thriller they beat our ladies bar by two points 111 to 33 that's 14 plays 12 in the other game being played today of course there's one more tomorrow and we'll have a live stream on that as well <laughs> <coughs> excuse me and we're just having a pause here for a moment the players have been told not to go in just yet they want to go down onto the pitch rather and they're letting the Mount St Michael players leave the scene first so respect being shown by the victors here today and the new champions Kalashtia Oriel and just in a second or two they will be allowed down onto the pitch to bring the cup down to their family and friends and fellow pupils but great speech by Unin Ni Hunyola the captain from Scotstown I'm also just going to finish with a few scenes of celebration and with a few comments that have come in on YouTube. And you see there, the board down there says, Kalashtia Oriel Abu, All-Ireland Final 2022. They have that for the photograph. So you'll see the photograph on here. So on YouTube, just to finish, Kevin McCabe says, congratulations, girls. Fabulous game and well-deserved. Excellent coverage. Thanks. Best wishes to the MSN injured player, Amy. Thank you for all of that, Kevin. And Neve Kindlin, the former Monaghan senior star, and now involved in helping a lot of these Monaghan girls come through. And there's a real production line there. A fabulous young player is coming through on this team and in other teams in Monaghan. She says congratulations to Fiona, Annette, Desi, and all in Kalashia Oriel. That's the managers. A brilliant achievement. Special mention, of course, to Mahara Clunes, Abby Carolyn and Lauren, Avin and Kate, current Monaghan under-16 team members. And that about sums it up. And there's the scene. What a happy scene that is for the girls from Kalashia Oriel. The All-Ireland Champions for 2022. And they look to be waiting for somebody to join the photograph. Who are they waiting for? Is there one more? No, they're just organising in it. And what a scene that is for them. And their supporters as well. Fully deserved. We hope you've enjoyed the live stream coverage. We have one more tomorrow, the All-Ireland A final. But for now, the Lidl All-Ireland Post-Primary Schools B Championship winners for 2022 from Monaghan, Kalastia Oriel. From all of us who have brought you the live stream coverage, we hope you've enjoyed it. It's been free to watch on YouTube, and it'll be on YouTube tomorrow as well. We'll start for, we'll hold on for one more celebration. There it is. Great scenes. Ball being thrown in the air. The cup is in there. They will celebrate long into the day. Two balls in there, and the lads are getting in there as well. They've all enjoyed it too. Well done, Kalastia, Oriel, Abu. From all of us in Pierce Park, it's goodbye.